This is the Football Show. Now, the Ange Postacoglu revolution continues at Tottenham. They put five past Burnley Saturday. Son scoring a hat-trick in that central striker role. Richarlison dropped to the bench. Uh, so what did Son bring to the role that the Brazilian hadn't? Let's have a look at this, because these are the average positions. You can see Richarlison, number nine, against Bournemouth, and you can see Son against Burnley, much further forward, Stephen. Um, so what is the difference? Why are we seeing the difference? Well, I think there's, there's two factors in this. I think the, the different styles of players. I think Son likes to run in behind. I think Richarlison tries to be a focal point and wants to bring others into play. Hasn't quite worked for him. I also think the teams that they were playing against, Burnley played a, a ridiculously high line against a really quick forward line against, uh, of Spurs, whereas Bournemouth dropped a little bit deeper, made it a little bit more difficult for Richarlison in that game and, and obviously Son and Kulisewski as well. But I just think it's the style of play in the individuals. I think Son is always looking to play on that shoulder. Uh, he can adapt his game and he can play with his back to goal, but I think he realised very early on that the, the game and the strengths in his game for this game against Burnley would be running in behind and he just got the opportunities time and time again. So going forward, is Son now number one choice to play in that central position or is it horses for courses? Yeah, it can depend on, on the game, but... Obviously, when, like Stephen said, if you're playing a high line like that, Son is absolutely perfect um, because of his, his running off the ball. Because when you've got a player like Madison, you've got Son stretching the play. It obviously creates space then for Madison to get on the ball and, and make things happen, which he's done since he's, he's arrived. And um, I, I just think Son just, you know, he led by example, didn't he? He's that, that real leader when he got himself into positions. That first finish was absolutely outstanding. And, and you can sort of criticise the defending from Burnley, but the movement from Son, I think you mentioned it with Manchester City, about how they work off the ball. He's brilliant, isn't he, at yeah. it? He's the one that will press and, and win the ball back high up the field. If they lose it, he's the first one to go. And then everybody then goes off his, his press and, and his position. So an outstanding performance from, from Son and Tottenham. So if you look at the, the two different options here, um, Brendan Johnson now coming in on deadline day, where does he fit in? He's going to have to earn his, his, uh, his place in the team, isn't he? It's going to be difficult for him to break in. Uh, will he play off either side? Will it be Solomon or will it be Kulisewski? Uh, he isn't, he isn't going to drop Son out of that position off, off the back of that performance. I think it could take Brendan Johnson... 10 games to break into this team to showcase what he can do. It might take an injury to someone. It might take a little bit of a, la uh, a drop off in form from one of the wider players. I don't see Brendan Johnson playing through the middle though. I do see him playing one of those wider positions, but it might just get to the point where Ange Postacoglu goes, well, I'm going to rotate them because what I'm doing then is I'm keeping them fresh. I'm keeping them hungry, coming off the bench, impact players. I mean, if you put me in a fullback position and I'm, st I'm playing against Kulisewski for talk talking sake, and I think, right, I've done 60 minutes against Kulisewski, and he goes, right, Brendan Johnson's coming on for the next 30 minutes. I'm thinking, oh, where's the respite? Gone. Yeah, <laughs> where's the respite here? From, yeah. a, from a, a manager's point of view, it's brilliant. From a player's point of view as well, if you can get your head around that, mm -hmm. I'm going to play 60 minutes one game and 30 minutes the next game. It's not a bad thing to have in your head thinking, I'm fresh. And that will also keep you fresh for longer throughout the season as well. So your performance levels will actually be higher all the way through but the players season. players want to play every yeah, second. They, they do, but the game's changed, Rob. The game's completely changed. If you'd have said that to me 10 years ago, you're going to be dropping in and out. I'd have been furious. But now, I think the game's changed that much. I think there's a realisation and an understanding is, is that because the, the game is so stats-driven now and data-driven, you can actually back it up and go, yeah, but your performance levels now, when you're playing, say, one game, well, 60, 70 minutes in, two, in every other game, your performance levels of what you're hitting th are, are through the roof. Whereas if you consistently play for 10 games, your distance covered, your sprints covered might be well below par for the, net, for the last three or four games. Well, your, your performance levels are going to dip. What does that then do to your confidence when you're thinking, I'm not quite getting there, I'm not quite doing the runs that I want to make, I can't make them. Whereas when you're actually playing every other game or playing a little bit in and out, 
then your level performance levels are higher. It's how a manager and coaching staff maybe deal with that as well and deal yeah, with those players. Yeah, put it players. to you. Yeah, because I think of Serena Wiegmann um, in the Euros where she was calling the players that came on as finishers. So you're not a sub, you're a player that's going to come on and finish yeah. the game and be my match winner, if you like. So you you then are sitting on the bench thinking, right, I'm going to come on and I'm going to... You gonna buy into that, don't you? You do, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's how you sort of maybe manage that that situation. But yeah, of course, Brendan Johnson's want to come on. He's going to want to come on, make an impact and... and keep that position but yeah to be able to, to rotate is a it's a good thing isn't it have that competition for places yeah but if we look at the flip side you're not are you really going to rotate James Madison uh, <laughs> at the moment um, because he's had a brilliant start okay it's it's um, Ukraine and then Scotland for England where does he rank in the pecking orders because England are very blessed in those areas that he operates in so what's your thinking there well, my big thing with this is is that we get mixed, man uh, mixed messages from the manager. So the manager says, if you're performing in the league and your levels are high, then you're going to play and you're going to you're going to get opportunities. James Madison's been outstanding so far yeah. in the season, deserves to start for England, but we know he's very loyal towards other players. We've seen Calvin Phillips and and uh, Harry Maguire get in the squad without playing minutes, and they get in the squad. So I'm a bit little little bit torn on what Gareth Southgate's going to do. Personally, I think he has to play behind, behind Harry Kane. I think what you're doing then is you're asking Harry Kane just to stay in between the, the goalpost and do what he does best, which is score goals. And you take away that burden of being the creator and the goal scorer. James Madison's vision is yeah. unbelievable. His positional sense of what he's doing, I think there's been a myth around him that he doesn't work hard enough. You see under Postacoglu, he's working harder than most of the other players. Also, that feeling of being a captain a senior or a vice captain to Son. We've seen him wear the armband at times this season already. He's growing into that role as well. He's matured so much as a player within the last two, three years. I think he deserves to start for England. I think he's been brilliant. Yeah, but then you've got Foden who can play in there. You've got Bellingham who's playing there for Real Madrid, haven't you? You've, you've got Grealish on one side, Rashford on the other. Where he you... doesn't play, Rob. Pop... Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's, That's it, he's out. It's difficult, <laughs> isn't it? But when you look at the balance of where Bellingham's played for England, and he does play that little bit deeper. But if you've got Declan Rice sat there, listen, these two games, you should dominate possession. You don't need two sitters. So put Bellingham and Madison high up the pitch. Put, put, put attacking players on there. Win it five and six. You've got the capabilities to do that. Declan Rice sat in behind. It's a Squeeze lovely Foden. balance, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> but you put Foden on one of the wings, yeah. can't you? I mean, how, how do you do it? It's very difficult, it isn't is. it? But Jack Grealish has picked up an injury. Does yeah. Foden then go out onto that left-hand side? Does that give him an opportunity? Saka, we know, will probably play on the right. Options, Great problems. It, it is. Yeah. And you've got Rashford. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just play a 0-0-10 a zero, zero, formation now. 60-30. <laughs> That's what we go back to. Give the players opportunities. 60 minutes, yeah. 30 minutes. Showcase what they can do. It is early days. Spurs, perhaps, are they going to surprise some people this season? I think there's a real feel-good factor around Spurs at the moment. And I think going into the season, you thought, well, it's going to take a little bit of time for Ange Postacoglu to, to get his sort of ideas and philosophy across. They've lost Harry Kane, which was a, a huge blow. But I think what he's done in such a short space of time is brilliant. I know they, they went out in the cup, which I know a lot of, of Tottenham fans were disappointed with because that was an opportunity to, you know, to maybe go on and, and win something. But what he's done in the league, the style of play, the way that the players are, are buying into it and, and so quickly is, has been brilliant. But Rob, he's made the club likeable. His yeah. character, his personality, that's a big, big thing as well. He's made Tottenham likeable now because of his personality.